there my name's Adrian and today we're going to be looking at Angie by Davy Graham now this is an all-time classic of folk guitar if you're remotely interested in playing acoustic finger style it's one of those tunes that you really should know how to play now before we get started I just want to say a brief word about the song and about the various different versions of the song because that can be quite confusing now the song was originally written by Davy Graham and the version that I'm going to teach you is, is fairly faithful to the way that he plays it. There are also some other very famous versions but Jansch has done a fantastic version, also Paul Simon's version is very well known but I'm not going to be looking at how to play those, maybe I'll do that in another lesson. I'm going to be sticking to the way that Davy Graham played it. But even when you're talking about the way Davy Graham played it, uh, that seems to have changed o over the years, the way he played it has, has evolved. Um, there are a couple of recorded, studio recorded versions of his that I know there are also various live versions and uh, he seems to play it slightly differently on, on all of those versions that I've heard. Now the version I'm going to teach you is I believe the second, based on the second studio recording that he made. It's uh, acoustic guitar accompanied by I think a, a stand up bass. I'll, I'll try and post a link to the exact version that uh, what I'm going to teach you is, is based on on uh, my website. So with all of that uh, out of the way, let's uh, take a look at how to play this. I want to start by just talking generally about the right hand technique used in this piece and that will save a bit of time and I won't have to go through every single right hand fingering for the entire piece. Now as a general rule, I'm going to be using my thumb to play the bass notes in this piece. So anything on the sixth, fifth and sometimes fourth strings, I'm going to be playing with my thumb and then the melody part, the treble part, I'm going to be playing with my fingers. Uh, what I like to do is I use my index finger to play notes on the third string, my second finger plays notes on the second string, and my third finger plays notes on the first string. Just, just a general rule, uh, sometimes you might break those rules and use your first finger to play notes on the second and first strings as well, that's, that's perfectly acceptable, but as a general rule that is, is going to work well for this whole piece. So let's get to the piece. I'm going to divide this teaching up into three sections. We've got what I call the main theme of the piece, which is this. We've got a secondary theme or a B section, which is this. And then we've got a kind of solo section, which is this. I'm going to deal with each of these sections in turn. Now this part of the tune is based around an open position A minor chord. I think it makes sense to start off by holding down this entire chord even though we're not actually playing one of the notes in the chord. I think it makes it easier if you do base it around this shape. 
So I've got my first finger playing the first fret on the second string, second finger playing the second fret on the fourth string, and third finger playing the second fret on the third string. It's just a standard open A minor chord. We're going to start out by playing the open fifth string bass note. Then I'm going to play the second fret on the third string. Then I'm going to lift up my first finger. I'm going to play the fifth and the second strings together and immediately I'm going to hammer and pull at the first fret with my first finger. I'm now going to play the third string again Then I'm going to put down the next bass note with my little finger. It's going to play the third fret on the sixth string. I'm going to play that note together with the still open second string. I'm going to play that bass note again. Then I'm going to take all of my fingers away from the guitar apart from my third finger which is staying put. In fact this third finger can stay put for the entire section of the tune. I'm going to play the open sixth and second strings together and straight away I'm going to hammer on at the first fret on those same strings. So I'm hammering on at the first fret on the sixth string and at the first fret on the second string. I'm doing that with my first and second fingers like this. So open sixth and second strings and then hammer on to the first fret. I'm going to play the third string one more time. Then I'm going to take away my second finger and I'm going to play our bass note first fret on the sixth string with the open second string together and finally I'm going to play the open low E string twice. That's the entire theme. I'm sorry if it sounds quite complicated when I take you through it note by note like this but it's really not too bad once you get it under your fingers. By all means rewind this uh, video a few times and, and watch it again just to get these notes together. It might even be a good idea to get a piece of paper and to write these notes down so you can ex see exactly what note is coming where. But why don't I just play the entire theme very slowly so you can see how it fits together. Notice how my third finger is just staying there at the second fret on the third string for the entire section of, of the piece and that really helps to, to, to get the whole thing together if you just keep that finger anchored there while the other fingers move around it. And once you've got it together, the basic coordination, you can start to speed up. It's played with a little bit of a swing as well. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. And uh, you've actually got the option of playing the bass note at the first fret on the low E string with your thumb. I know that Bert Jansch does that when he plays Angie. not sure what Davy Graham does. I'm not sure there's any video footage of him playing the tune but when I see him playing some other tunes he's got a very classical type hand position and posture which makes me think that he probably wasn't using his thumb because the thumb doesn't really come over the top of the guitar when you're playing classical guitar so I'm guessing he's playing it with my fingering but if you prefer you can use your thumb over the top it doesn't make any difference to the sound of it. So let's look at the B section or the secondary theme. This is all based around some sixth shapes, meaning that the musical interval of a sixth, which has got a very sweet kind of a sound. I'm going to start off by playing the first fret on the second string together with the second fret on the fourth string. I'm going to play that twice and then we're going to pull off to the two open strings, to the open second and fourth strings. Then we're going to take the same kind of finger configuration and move it over to here. First finger is playing the second fret on the third string. 
second finger is playing the third fret on the fifth string. Play those two notes together. Then just move that shape one fret lower. So we've got this. Now we're going to play the open low E and the open third string together. And immediately we're going to hammer on with our first finger to the first fret on the third string. Then we're going to play high E string. We're going to play another low E bass note. And then we're going to play an open second string. And we're going to play that two times. So once and twice. So, so far we have this. Now we're going to play the first section of that again, the, the, the first bar one more time, exactly the same way. Now we're going to play this, which is uh, I'm playing the fifth fret on the high E string together with the fourth fret on the third string. Then I'm playing the fourth fret on the high E string together with the third fret on the second string. Then I'm going back to our initial shape, but I'm just staggering the notes. I'm playing the thumb and then I'm using my first finger to play the second string. Then I'm going to play the same two strings, the second and fourth strings open. Now we're going to play our first bar again, the same way. Going to play open third and sixth strings with the hammer on at the first fret on the third string like before. Another high E string. Now we're going a bit higher up the neck and playing this. A little bit awkward to play this bit actually, it's based around an E7 kind of sound. Um, the first chord shape is this one. I'm playing the sixth fret on the fourth string with my second finger, the seventh fret on the third string with my third finger, the first fret on the second string with my first finger, and the eighth fret on the high E string, the first string with my little finger. Um, I'm going to play the fourth string first with my thumb, and I'm going to play the three higher strings with my fingers. So thumb then fingers. Then I'm just going to tuck my little finger in and play the seventh fret on the high E string. The other notes are going to stay the same and I'm just going to play the fingers again. So I'm playing the uh, first, second and third strings again. So we've got this. Then finally we're back down to the first position. We're going to play the first bar as we did before. But we're just going to play one more chord which is the, the, the same shape moved back up one fret. So the first finger at the second fret on the third string, second finger at the third fret on the fifth string. So, And to finish off we've just got a little descending bass line which leads in back to the main theme of the piece. And that's just uh, an open A string, fifth string, third fret on the low E, first fret on the low E, and an open low E. And that's the B section to the tune. Uh, maybe a brief word about the, the rhythm. Um, best if you can pick this up by ear, I think, but it's um coming in on a slight push on the AND of four. So if, if, you, if you are counting the rhythm to this, it'll be one, two, and three, and four, AND. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, and three, and four, AND. So that might be the slightly tricky thing rhythmically, but uh, just, just remember you're coming in on the AND of four rather than on, on the one. Of, of the bar. 
Now we're going to take a look at what I call the solo section and here Davy Graham is playing some A minor pentatonic type blues licks together with a solid A bass note in the thumb. Both of those things fairly easy to do separately but you put together the treble notes and the bass notes and it's actually quite tricky. So let me take you through what he's doing very slowly. I'm going to start off playing our bass note with the thumb, that's an open A string. Then I'm going to play the third fret on the second string. I'm going to play that together with our thumb bass note again and straight away we're going to bend upwards our note um, at the third fret on the second string. So Then we're going to release the bend and as we release the bend we're going to play another bass note. So we play two notes together, we bend up, release the bend, and as we come down out of the bend we play the thumb bass note. We don't re-pick the bend as we release it. Next we're going to pull off from the third finger to the first finger which is at the first fret on the second string, and then we're going to play the second fret on the third string together with another A bass note. That's the first bar of the solo. Let me just put that together for you very slowly. It's the bass note, bend, release, pull off, and then the final two A notes. So one more time. Now we've got this. The, the melody part is this. We've got pulling off from the third fret to the first fret on the second string twice, playing the third fret again and then playing at the high E string together with the first fret on the second string. That's the, the melody part and again we just got a steady thumb bass running through that so we're going to play the third, third fret and the bass note together, pull off, and then bass note and third fret together, pull off, bass note third fret again and then our high E and first fret on the second string. So that bar goes like this slowly. Then we're going to repeat the first bar, so that's the, the bend, release and pull off part. Now we're going to hammer in to an E kind of chord shape and sound. So I'm going to play the open third string. Straight away I'm hammering on the first fret on the third string. I'm also going to, going to hammer down the other notes from an open E chord. Um, you can't really hear those notes in, in, in the recording but I think it makes sense to base it around that E chord shape and you might just get some resonances from those two notes as well when you're playing it. So I think that makes sense. So one more time we're just going to play the open third string, hammer on our E chord and at the same time as we hammer playing a bass note with the thumb. This, this time it's a low E bass note. Then I'm going to play the first fret on the third string again, another bass note before resolving to A minor, so hold down an A minor chord shape and I'm going to play the two A notes, the fifth string and the third string together. And then I'm just going to brush the higher notes in that chord with my first finger. So probably hitting the first, second, third, maybe fourth strings, just a little brush with my first finger. So that's, that's the, the first four bars of the solo. If I just play all of that for you slowly. Notice how there's that very steady bass note pulse running all the way through that. That's something you want to aim for. Now we're going to continue with some variations on the bending lick that we, we started off with. It's just the timing is a little bit different now. We're going to play the bass note, then we're going to bend the third fret on the second string, 
but we're going to bend it just before the next bass note and then as we play the next bass note we're going to release the bend so it's bass note bend release together with the bass note so the, the bend comes in between the two bass notes might even be a little bit of a pre-bend in there actually where you're bending just before you hit the string and we're going to do that twice so once and then bend again bend again now we're going to play first fret on the second string we're going to play the second fret on the third string together with an A bass note then we're going to play the first fret on the second string again so very slowly that bar one more time now the rest of the solo is exactly the same as before so it's like an eight bar solo the last three bars are the same as the second third and fourth bar so we continue with our double pull off lick we've got another bending lick hammer into the E chord and then the A minor to finish so once again um, it does sound quite complicated when I describe it note for note like this but it's really not too bad it's just I have a couple of different licks here going on uh, it might be very helpful if you write down these notes I will try and put a transcription of this up on the website as well so I'm just going to finish by playing the entire solo section very slowly so you can see and hear exactly what's going on two three four one Before I forget there's one other piece you're going to need to learn before you can put everything together and that is a very nice little ending lick which goes like this and to play that we're going to start off with this little tritone shape it's the first fret on the fourth string and I'm playing that together with the second fret on the third string play that three times pull both of those notes off to the open strings then I'm going to play the third fret on the fifth string pulling off to an open fifth string then I'm going to play an open low E hammer on to the third fret and then hammer on again to the fourth fret play an open A string I'm going to finish off with an A minor 7 chord um, I'm playing the open A string and then I'm barring across the first, second, third and fourth strings with my first finger. You've got a nice A minor 7 sound. So the, the whole ending lick. You should now have all of the component parts to, to play the entire piece. I think the structure of the piece, we start off with the main theme. Play that four times. Then we've got the B section. Then we play the main theme again another four times. Then we've got the solo. We again return to the main theme, play it uh, four times. Then we play the B section again and the only difference is that the second time we play the B section it's actually simplified. We're just playing just playing that four times in a row. There are none of the fancier the fancier chord fills the second time he plays it. And then 
Finally, we return to the main theme, but we only play it three times, I think. And then we finish off with our ending lick. And there you have it. Well, I hope you have some fun learning how to play this tune. It is a fantastic tune to be able to play. Remember to take it slowly. I think it is quite a challenging tune to learn in the beginning, but uh, make sure you sort out the technique and the coordination at a really slow tempo. And then I think the speed will just come naturally if you're doing everything in the right way. That's it for this lesson, and I hope to see you for another one very soon. Bye-bye.